lying on. Okay. Awesome, man. Uh, do you make your coffee? How do y'all drink coffee in Australia? Do you drink it black or with cream? <laughs> a lots of cream. Extra creamy. Elia, yeah, Sam Shimon is more honorable person than Rob. That's all we need to know. <laughs> so what's up, man? All right. So this is it going to get interesting, guys? Can we hit 100, 200 people now that we've got Rob here? Come on, please, please bring it up. Yeah, so in regards to Dul Kanaan, you brought up Dul Kanaan, the Aaron, Moses, Miriam thing. So yeah. are you suggesting that so Mary, time. according to Christians, is a Levite? I'm suggesting that I don't care what the Bible says because I don't trust it as a reliable piece of, uh, uh, as a source so for how, information. So how do you know Mary is a Levite? I don't care. Because aren't the Christians claiming that Jesus in the line of Judah? Again, I don't care what Christians and claim. Shouldn't shouldn't Mary be considered a Judahite in the context I, of I, Elizabeth? That clearly, I don't care. Like, I, I'll tell you what I do Elizabeth care about. Comes from Aaron, not. I'll tell Aaron. you what I do care about. What I care about is you having commentary of the Quran. Do you speak any Arabic? No. What gives you the authority to have any type of commentary on the Quran? Uh scholars who've translated the Quran and when I look at the tafsirs of the Quran okay so so what do these tafsirs I'm, tell I'm you an, I'm in academia I can read peer reviewed journals just like you I supposedly you're a, a, a medical doctor of some kind no based on the prior discussion no no okay. I, I'm, I'm just trying to understand how you came to the conclusion that that of the how did you come to these conclusions? Where is the tefsir that you're reading? Because can you, because can you I'm reading so I can read it? because when I read scholarship and even the scholars bring this out. So when I look at Miriam, Aaron, Moses, Amram, and I see how very specifically those particular names are associated with a family group in the Exodus story. And then when I, when I look at Surah 19, Surah 66, Surah 3, how curious. The same names are applied to those particular individuals. Okay, those scholars that you're reading, bro, are they Mufassirin of the Quran or are they uh, exegetes of the Bible? They are exegetes of the Bible. So, oh, and, okay, so let's just pause and, right and there. Then, and what then gives them the, we... what gives them the authority to talk about the Quran? It, it has nothing to do with whether they have authority or not. The point is, is that the Quran mentions those names because the Quran is relying on a prior text, which no. those scholars I'll tell you what the point have is. a right authority to commentate on because I'll tell you what the point is. Working with the those point prior is, texts. here's the point. The point is your conclusions are relying on the interlinking of these two texts and you're not respecting them for the individuality that they so are. Then, so then what text is the Quran relying on? If Is it relying on any text of the past? No, it's not relying on any text. The Quran all right, is its own right. revelation. So then whatever whatever happened in history is purely from Allah, not on any other biblical everything is or historical everything document. Is, everything is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything. <clears throat> so right. here's the issue. When you say right. things like when you say let me let me give you an example just so we can we can help the audience a little bit. Mm -hmm. Because in your video you say these are Syriac legends. Right or these are these type that's of with the dual, that's with the dual Canaan context. I, no, you said it in multiple occasions where you claim that the Quran is you actually claim that Muhammad peace be upon him was plagiarizing. It looks that like that. Plagiarist. The Quran right? looks like it's utilizing these prior texts. I don't care what it looks like to you, man. You're not respecting it for what it is. See, I so, can tell you that the Bible. So Iblis prostrating like to Adam is not like life of Adam and Eve. Abraham being saved from the fire is not like the Jewish legends that were cropping up in the first six centuries. Again, just because something has a similarity, and then let's say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala co corrects it in his new revelation, right? Ah. It, you, so so here's, here's your issue. But how do you validate that? How do you know I'm gonna tell you right an now. invisible right being? Now. How do you know that an invisible deity is correcting that? Uh, because we have proof that a messenger came with a revelation. And that revelation is correct. What we also so have proof is reason. that the previous... Hold on one second. What we also have proof of is that the previous revelations were corrupted. Why? Because the authors were fallible people. So here's the, 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 the problem that you're having. 
What you're doing is you're taking the fallibility and the writings of men, and then you're claiming that a prophet plagiarized these men, and your uh, conjecture is that because there's a similarity or some type of, um, you know, uh, uh, like instances that are that are kind of the same in some way, shape, or form, some type of correlation that you're now saying, oh, now it's de facto that he plagiarized. When this is just a massive leap, dude. Massive. Right, right. So the prior text, according to you, so like the Bible, is corrupted. Okay. Yeah. So we have and not no according other to means. me, bro. According to Christian scholarship, yeah. I'm not no. making the claim. No, I'm no, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That that's I. I'll go along with that hyperbolic statement. Let's just go along with the biblical minimalist position. So I'm a maximalist. There's a lot of good scholars in the field that are maximalists. But let's go along with the minimalist position, the the hyper liberal position, which, by the way, they themselves will disagree with the Quran on many things, like for example, the crucifixion of Jesus, like. Dominic Crossan will say things like, yeah, Jesus was crucified, but he was fed to the dogs. Who like, is that's Dominic how his Cross? body was disposed. Who is Dominic Cross to have any John Dominic Crossan. No, these are specialists. You just cited the scholars that supposedly say the Bible is corrupt. So those really liberal scholars themselves will laugh at the Quran statements because they themselves say, yeah, duh. You can see how the Sirach legend is reutilized in the Quran. You can see how the life of Adam and Eve is reutilized in the Quran. You can see, for example, um, the are these Christian mis scholars the commenting on the Christian naming Bible? of certain people are these Christian in scholars, the Quran? Bro. Are these Christian scholars? No, they're not. They're what not are Christian they? scholars. They're, they're atheists they're and they're agnostics. They're atheists and agnostics. Why do you keep doing that? Why do you keep going to Christians, atheists, and agnostics that have uh, an opinion on what the Quran says what about what? What makes you what? think? What makes you think that their worldview gives them a certain bias with respect to their scholarship? Um, because they chose the worldview that they chose that's other than Islam. They 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 have the worldview that Islam is false by default. Not by default, based on the scholarship. No, it's by their because own. You, because, what, because what you have to do is you have to demonstrate to me that once upon a time, it is a, a fact of history that Abraham was saved from the fire of the Chaldeans. It's no, a fact I don't. of history that to Iblis to you. Was, was told to prostrate to Adam and Eve. It's a fact of history no, I don't have that to, I don't have to demonstrate that to you, bro. went east and west, and that's why he's called the two horns. I don't have to demonstrate that to you. See, that's the issue that you have. So you then have this, why... You have this... Uh, here's your how, issue, bro. How do you verify this historically, then? Here's how I... Ver do you want me to tell you how I verify that it's true? Yeah, go for it. Go okay. for it. Was there a guy by the name of Muhammad, uh, peace be upon him, that walked this earth? Yes. Okay, did this guy claim prophethood? Yes. Is this guy a liar? Is he telling the truth? Is he delusioned or is he deceived? He claims, to, based on my reading, he claims to be speaking on behalf of Allah. Like Allah's revelation is coming through him. Okay, so he's claiming revelation that he's talking to God. Yeah. Now, what do you believe? Let's test the claims. No, I'm asking you what you believe. I let's test the claims. Why what I you, can't make a decision. You believe something, right? You either you have to believe one of those. I four. I believe. I don't believe. Nor do I believe. You can't just make. You, you are literally at the crossroads with respect to that data point. It's a data point. No, bro. Some you know what that sounds person like. Person A that is like making a, a claim. Sandwich. What you just said is a no, soup no, no, sandwich. No, 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 no. So person A is making a claim. All right. Uh, let's see if indeed this is in what happens in history. Oh no, there's an anachronism here. Oh no, it looks like this yeah, is Tales man. of the Ancients. Which hey, we're not, ironically, we're not, uh, the, you're, you're, the, you're, you're digging way beyond those, the question that I asked those, you. Watch how simple this is. Those critics of Muhammad check, in the on, Quran are saying exactly that same thing. Check out how simple this is. Tortoise, do you believe that Muhammad was telling a lie, telling the truth, was deceived, or is insane? Which one? I haven't they, investigated the data point. Yeah, do you believe that he was telling a lie, telling the truth, deceived, or insane? No, I'm a Muslim. I wouldn't believe that. So you believe he's telling the truth then, right? Yeah. Great. I also believe that he's telling the truth. Brandon believes he's telling the truth. How do I know that they're telling the truth, that, that, that they believe this? Because they accepted Islam. They accepted the prophet. And they accepted that he actually did, in fact, speak to God. Now, Tortoise, did you accept Islam after you have done 
an ample amount of due diligence, read the entirety of the Quran, studied Arabic to its fullest, learned about poetry. No. Uh, no. no. So here's your issue, Rob. You, you open the book, right, with a frame in mind already. And your frame is, I'm going to bust this thing up. And I'm going to find every which way to bust now it. Now you're psychologizing and projecting what, how I, my method... Oh, oh no, 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 no. I'm not projecting. I have all yeah, the, I have all the data points to tell me otherwise. Because you literally really? said I don't yeah. Do you, you want... Don't don't mute me. Alcohol, you muted everybody. The, here's the example. So like now I'm kinda like in that point where like I quit all those addictions. Brandon, you're not muted by the way. You know. That's awesome. So have you ever tried beef bacon before? Uh, beef bacon? Yeah. Uh, no, it actually tastes way better than pork bacon. So if that is the one thing holding you back from accepting Islam, then just move to beef bacon and you can still continue to have your bacon, you know, because that's and that's one thing. And at the end of the day, there was a guy who came to the Prophet Muhammad. Right. And he said, look, I only want to pray three times a day. I don't want to pray five times a day. And the Prophet, what did he say? He said, OK, st still become Muslim. Right. Like you can bring your baggage in like because we're not perfect. Take your time step by step. Take it out. And we, we, we know what's right and what's wrong. But don't let that since you already have the beliefs. Right. And you agree with all that. Just take that step and then take it slow as you go. You don't need to completely change everything in your life overnight. OK, so I mean, if so, if you're ready, we can do this right now and, um, you know, we can help you and I'll still, you know, we'll be in touch every step of the way. And whatnot, but the main thing is just uh, the testimony of faith. So, are you ready? Okay, I'm ready. Okay. Yes. So we'll say it in English first, and then we'll say it in Arabic. Okay. All right. So, I testify. I testify that there is no God worthy of worship. That there is no God worthy of worship except Allah. Except Allah. And I testify. And I testify that Muhammad, that Muhammad is the messenger and servant, is the messenger and servant of Allah, of Allah. And I testify, and I testify that Jesus, that Jesus is the messenger and servant of Allah. Is the messenger and servant of Allah. Allahu Akbar, brother. Welcome home. So now we're gonna say it in Arabic, and I'll take it slow. If a country boy like me can do it, then it'd be pretty easy for you. <laughs> All right, you ready? All right. Yeah. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. An la. An la. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Can you repeat that again? Illa. Illa. Allah. Allah. Wa ashhadu. Wa ashhadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammada. Muhammada. Abduhu. Abduhu. Wa rasulu. Wa rasulu. Wa ashhadu Wa ashhadu Anna Anna Isa Isa Abduhu Abduhu Wa rasulu Wa rasulu Allahu Akbar brother welcome home mashallah um uh, I'm really glad you called and I'll let you guys uh, take it back um I'm really glad you called. May Allah bless you and take care of you. And inshallah. Oh man, fix up the cams. I want to see. I want to see their beautiful faces. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's going on here. I think we're all here. He just adjusted the layout. There we Don't go. Worry. All right, so here's uh, you're claiming that it's projection, brother, but I'm not claiming project. Uh, I'm not projecting. I am going off of the information of what you're putting out on YouTube, and the conversation that you had with Tortoise, and what you just said here with me today. 
And like, let me tell you, it's, it's very simple to conclude that you yourself don't know what you believe in. You said it yourself. Want, want, you want some proof? On the video with him, you literally said you're a, you don't believe in creation. You believe in evolution. And you call yourself a Christian? Okay, so that's a scientific fact. So the Quran's wrong on that. Next. What's the next point? What's, what's a scientific fact? Tell me what's evolution, a scientific Evolution fact. is a scientific fact. How old is how old is the universe? Do you think? How old is uh, billions and billions of years old? Epochs. How old is? No, not epochs. There's a yeah, specific epochs. number. Many, many, many epochs. There's a specific number to the universe. It's okay, thirty point seven nine billion years. Number. There's See, a specific number to the Earth. Four point five six six two billion. There's Great. A specific number for human beings with respect to the haplogroups and the mutation rates around three hundred thousand years. Adam was not the first human. Okay. Again. You you're making all these just ridiculous claims, and you're it's throwing not ridiculous, fancy it's language scientific. out there. No, no, no there's not nothing scientific, scientific about scientific. it. You have you have it is. nothing. You it have is. nothing conclusive. I'm in it. the field of astrophysics. Excuse I, me. I don't care about don't, your field. Don't 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 discount the field that is established and is giving you the opportunity to speak live on this no, thing we call the internet. As a matter of fact, as a scientist, it's it is it is a heresy for you to say to speak in absolutes. It's a heresy. Uh, to speak in absolutes. Uh, there's such a thing as a law and a no. theory, no. which is established and the in the sense of until being a otherwise. fact. There's a, no. they're, they're valid no. until proven no. otherwise. No. Yes. There's a, there's a certain range, all right? So, for example, Einstein's relativity has been proven to 20 places of a decimal. It's now considered the law of Einstein. Yes. And why is there a range? Because it when can you still have, be proven false. When you have anyway, black hole go merger down, events. I'm not going to go down that have, path with you, bro, because you have black hole merger has events, nothing to do with evolution that is practically whatsoever. That is practically the consideration for why it's considered now a law. Okay. Again, it's been proven to 20 places of a decimal. Again, bro, you're... Evolution you're, has been proven to... The, in fact, evolution, there's more evidence for evolution than even Einstein's relativity. That's the amazing about, thing about evolution. Okay, you're talking about evolution as a concept, which, again, I don't disagree with you on, on things to what having... What do you mean by concept? Yeah, as a concept. So a lost how, panatala how's can it a concept? A lost panatala can create it as, a, uh, as an evolutionary, uh, as like a concept for things to, to move in a particular manner. But the actual origin, the origin of the world is creation it's not of the known universe is creation it's the how do you know the universe that? didn't evolve from nothing magically something yes, didn't come did. from nothing can, there's models to explain it to, to arise naturalistically i don't care about your models they're inconclusive bro they're conjecture it's not that's it's not inconclusive it's math how is math inconclusive because math goes off of theories and those <laughs> theories are so we make up two plus two is four is that what we do I think two plus two is four. Okay. So again, you're conflating the two issues, bro. You're saying that math proved the origin of the universe. And that's not that's different than two plus we two. Use, is four. We use the tool of math, which is a, a you know a universal fact in all of reality. You, this the, the the laws of math or the logic of math, I should say, applies oh, okay. here on Earth as it does to a quasar thirteen point you know, 13.1 so billion years So do you believe in God? Away. Yes, I do believe in God. You just said that the, we just came from math, that we just came from evolution. Everything just o originated from yeah. math. Yeah, okay. so How did you, how did you, and, and, and if so, I were to say we came so from God. So I, I separate, I separate scripture and theology and science and the natural world as two books. I have what's called the book of nature and the book of scripture. This is actually part of the church creeds. It's part of what's called the Belgic Confession as well. It's a European Reformation creed. Now, when I look at, say, the Adam topic, the fact that you're even reacting against evolution is a telltale sign you you haven't really thought deeply enough about the significance of the fact that if humans did evolve from Luca, you know, last universal common ancestor, 4.1 billion years ago, you have a major problem because in your theology, you have Adam up in heaven, and, you know, the Iblis and all these other characters are being told to bow down and prostrate to him. And then he's sent to the earth, which is in the life of Adam and Eve, in the Solomonic Apocalypse of Enoch. These are all first century. And you're texts. talking biblical stuff. And, and then you're the, saying, this, Quran, what? this has no relevance to the fact of the out of Africa model, as we understand Homo sapiens to have risen from. 
around 200,000 okay. years so, ago. So let me and get Adam this was not the first human being. Let me get this straight, bro. So the Bible claims creation, right? Yes. And and you say that you have two separate books according to the church. Yes. Okay. Are you a heretic? No. How, is that, how does that how does that label me a heretic? Uh, because if which one takes precedent, your book of nature or the Bible? Both. They're, they're both important. They're both. Uh, <laughs> which one has authority over the other, other, dude? Which one has authority over neither, the other? Neither. Neither. Neither has authority over the other. No, the scripture, the scripture has its own evolution, right? And the book of nature has its own evolution, in the sense that history is not some static, stagnant thing. When we look back in time, we see this is incredible, massive right? changes over thirteen billion years. The early conditions of, say, the Planck Epoch, right? That is radically different to the events that transpire, say, 9 billion years after the universe's evolution. And especially another 4 billion years, now basically the present day, as you and I are talking. There's a, this book of nature, we're talking 13 billion years of just radical change that's transpired. The same thing with the Bible. I'm not From opposed Genesis to change, Revelation, bro. I'm not opposed this, to change. This change that happens. I'm not opposed to change. I'm talking about the origin. All right. All right. So then, okay, wait, wait. So here's, here's where the rubber hits the road. Do you believe Adam was the first man? I believe that he was the first man. Yes. Do you believe Adam was an evolved, like, monkey, basically? No. No. There you go. So if he's the first man and he's not evolved, you've now left the realm of science. You've left, you've left the realm of, of history and fact of the natural his, you know, no, there's no fact. Record. You don't have a, you, you don't have a, that link, is though. a fact. You there is no, done. there is no magical ancient astronaut dude being thrown down onto the earth. And Incredible, in fact, bro. in fact, when, what, what year would you place Adam descending onto the earth? Like how long ago? I, I don't care. Those things don't, the, 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 they're not important to me. You're, they are important. A hundred thousand years, how... five hundred thousand years. I think Adam might have been maybe a few hundred thousand years ago, if not yeah, a million. It, so. it, and again, it, it doesn't matter. Not... That, that's what, like, that's was, the whole was thing. Was Adam with the a population of humans when he was sent down? There was it's, no humans. No, no humans. No humans. R Period. So wait, you're you're telling me that uh, okay, which which country then? What was he descended in? Was he descended in Africa, Persian Gulf, India, Australia? What does that matter? What you know, I, I don't understand where you're. Where how you're curious! Going. The Genesis text gives you geography. The Genesis text gives you chronology and times as to when you can place these things. So, so does. The but Hindu yet the Quran text. doesn't do so, that. So does the Hindu text, but we don't take that. <laughs> really? So where does the Hindu? Okay, wait, wait, wait. Where does the Hindu something. text say that? I read the Vedas and the Mahabharata. Where does the Hindu text mention of an Adam? They talk about random. how many years ago they do their calculations based on what the text. But says they don't mention. They don't give a date, or they don't mention a first man. I'm sorry. I'm not saying about the first man. I'm saying as far as dates go, they give places. I'm just no, saying. No, just that say a reincarnation million... every 4.5 billion years. That's all the Hindus say. That's that's wrong scientifically. Don't give him any wiggle room, bro. Because here's his issue: if he went over to the scientific community and he started touting the Bible, they would declare him a heretic. And if he went over to the church community and started <laughs> touting science, I'm in they'd good company with a lot of established scholars in the science field who are faithful Christians and have no issue with a, what's called a genealogical Adam and Eve that are intermingling with pre-humans and co-humans simultaneously. I, I would, you can't I would say to... all of humanity, you can't say 8 billion people come from 2 people. That's impossible. Yes, I can. I uh, definitely no, you can. Can't. No, yes, you can. I can. What, I can what's the scientific evidence for that? You don't need scientific evidence. That's you, your problem. Yes, bro. you do. No, you don't. You we try look. To break. We look at the mutation rates. No, you can't go back to just two. Yes, it's you, can. Yeah, it's yes you can. Possible. Yes, you can. Look, you can. It's called the human genome. No, I that don't That was care established in 2010. I don't care what the scientific community calls it. I in, care what in God 2010 it. the human genome was established. You can go back and see mi mitochondrial Eve and Y chrome Adam. Okay, those are I, not again, the individuals. You're, yet, you're they are population groups. You're saying a bunch of stuff, but it's not. Uh, you know, in Bosnian, we have a saying. It's called shupja. You know what shupja means? It's when you talk a bunch, but everything is just hollow. You just say a bunch of fancy Any, things, and it's just all hollow, bro. All I hollow. recommend you peer review this discussion with a scientist. Everything I'm just sprouting out, the scientist will be like, yeah, why okay. chrome Adam? Okay. Mitochondrial Again, leave. He's so, right on the money with that. So, so, so check this out. Check this out. If I were to talk to your scientist, and I were to ask him, did, did the universe, did the world, everything that we see here come from God? 
what would I get? He he, he would say, we don't know. <laughs> okay. See, so this Rob, is the problem. The problem we, is we don't, you're trying to you can't you away. can't make You can't make a scientific assertion about a thing that exists outside the system. For I example, I'll give, I'll, give, I'll, give you, I'll give you a, an analogy. Since we are living in an expanding universe, we don't know the center of the universe. And here's an analogy to explain that. Say you're on the surface of a balloon, all right? The three-dimensional balloon is an analogy of our four-dimensional expanding universe. If you're on the surface of the balloon, that surface represents two dimensions on this 3D expanding balloon. If you're a dot here, and I'm on a dot over here, and as we're expanding out, and if I was to communicate to you, hey, where's the center of the balloon, which is obviously the air being blown in, in this direction, you and I would not be able to know where the center of the balloon is. Can you please it's tell me how this links bang. to the original question? Bro? So you can't then, again, like a if balloon, you don't know the down, center, if you don't know the center, out. if you don't know the center, you can't then verify that there is a center, and therefore you can't verify that there is indeed an originator blowing in the air. That's Again, what, what that a cosmologist will tell you. Oh my God, man! I, I'm I just, got, I, I'm just I, saving I, you. I, in fact, you I'm protecting you from any potential uh, mockery that might happen if you're talking with a no, cosmologist. I don't, I don't, I don't if you're going down, bro. if you're going down, the That's trajectory to, to make an assertion that God created the universe. You need their validation. I do not. I do not. I don't need their I validation. Have, I don't. I'm need a grown validation. individual. I can read the peer review literature. I don't need the validation. I know what I read. I'm using my mind. You're your own teacher making your own mistakes and getting your no. own biases. Okay, where, where have I made a mistake properly. scientifically? Where have I made no. a mistake? Again, why are you conflating science with the origin of, uh, with, with God? Why are you conflating the two? Since, <laughs> where, where, here, here, in this discussion, I said you don't do that. Here, here, I Rob. didn't conflate the two. That's why Rob. I said you separate the book of nature and the book of scripture. Rob. I'm not conflating them. Rob, you, you're you, the one conflating them. You're saying, no, it's a fact. Adam was the first man. Okay. It's why a, am I, it's a fact of, uh, that, we, that 8 billion people can come from two people. Why, why don't you ask me, why do I consider it a fact? All right. Why is it a fact? Okay. Because the Quran says so. And why don't you ask me, why do I consider the Quran <sighs> to be true? Yeah, so so we can actually okay. break the circular yes, argument. So you can break we can it. break it. We can okay. make it not a circular argument. Wow. Yeah, I got this hot so air seven, balloon and so I can't seven, touch two points. What so a seventh mean, century Arabian text has the means to communicate to me 13.8 billion years of universal history in fine detail, especially human migrations and all that history. Yeah, again, you're looking for the fine detail. The, the Quran is a book of revelation. Of God, of Almighty, God. Hold on, let me great, finish. Bro. Great. Let me finish. Let me finish. Almighty God will communicate to everyone and anyone how he wills, not how God okay, wants. Okay. All right. You understand all right. that? All right. That's Let's go along with then. Okay. Yeah, let's go along right. with it. Okay, I I can you're right. In a in a primary school, I can I can do like a bullet point check checklist and compared to like a five hundred page book for say university students, for like year like uh, kids that are ten years of age, I can put like a bullet point power slide, you know, bullet points like facts. All right. You're saying the Quran is like a bullet point, you know, no. bang, 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 no. bang, bang. No, I'm not. I'm not. Then where's the finer details gone then? Okay. Again, you don't need to you don't need details in everything to draw a conclusion. So for example, let me give you an example. Is the Quran claiming to be from a divine source? It makes that claim. Okay, great. So does it prove it? Where where's the proof no, 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 when I'm no, actually no. where I'm actually seeing practically the Quran, not the, the Quran practically engaging with literature of just the first five centuries? My man, does the Quran prove it or not? Does the Quran prove no, that it's no, the No, based on my reading, it doesn't. No, okay, it doesn't. What, so did you actually read the Quran in its entirety? Yes, I have read the Quran in its entirety. Okay. And what was your conclusion when you came when you came My to conclusion the is that yeah, you have a deity stuck in a seventh century Arabian context. And right. a deity who can't think forward or definitely not even backward, not even past eighth century BC. It so, seems to so, be so if this deity within prophesizes that events range. To happen in the future, if this deity prophesizes events to happen in the future, how is that not thinking forward? It the Quran doesn't make any of those predictions, and what? the Quran, no, the Quran doesn't 
There's, there you is haven't no read the Quran, bro. You haven't read the Quran. The, the Quran. I'll put all the my fact that the Quran, right now, the, the Quran. fact that the Quran gets things like the origin of Adam wrong from a scientific natural history yeah, sort see, of context. Again, you're conflating science mm -hmm. and you're conflating revelation. It, you, you have this issue that when you get no, but that is, but that's part of the natural wrong. history. That's part of the natural record. You, you uh, understand that part of science and the, the natural I mean, record. simple things like simple things like Abraham and the fire. Where did that concept come from? Is the, Quran the, only, is the Quran the only? Is the Quran the only? Is the Quran the only text that mentions Abraham being saved from the fire? I asked you if the Quran made a future claim, and you said it has not made any future claims. The, there's no future claims that's come right with respect to the Quran, and there's no historical claims that the Quran has said that is validated historically. Okay. Okay. The so, whole thing is just is. <laughs> The whole Quran, like for example, the crucifixion of Jesus, right? Do you believe Jesus was not crucified? So let, let's, uh, I want to start with a question for you, uh, Rob. Um, so you, I know you diverge and you are open about it from a lot of notions that Christians believe that you think that they shouldn't hold on to them because you can you can understand the Bible differently. Then how? I mean, then how do you explain the Bible? I mean, obviously because science and history completely go against this. There's no evidence whatsoever. That the sun ever stood still, right? Um, in in the Bible, when Joshua, I can explain that. Then how do you explain that? The text doesn't talk about the sun or the earth standing still. A little bit of knowledge in the ancient Near East and ancient Near Eastern polemics will tell you that a lot of people usually just stop reading. The sun stood still. Keep reading the same verse. It then says that the moon also stood still, which is, by the way. You can't have the sun and the moon on either sides sort of suddenly halting like that. And the battle takes two weeks to complete. There's no definite article before the word Yom there. So Yom is a period of time. Now, in, the, in regards to the ancient Near East, you have what's called Mesopotamian omen texts, where there's a, a sort of like an appeal to these deities that are associated with the natural objects in the sky to bring about a certain a certain outcome so the text is a polemic with respect so it's joshua's wars with respect to the amorites the amorites had shemesh the sun deity in the gibeon valley they had the moon deity in the agilon valley and it's a theological polemic that yahweh who is above and transcendent to the sun and moon deities is halting the sun and moon deities there's a PhD dissertation that's been written by a guy named J. Glenn Taylor, literally Yahweh and the sun, ancient sun worship or solar, solar worship in the ancient Near East and with respect to Israel. And he showcases the parallelism between Joshua 10 and those Mesopotamian Norman texts to show that no one, not even the Mesopotamian Norman texts, no one was thinking of literally the sun halting in the sky. No one was thinking that in the ancient Near East. It's a it's this whole notion of the sun stopping the sky actually becomes a uh, proposition with Copernicus and the people with respect to Galileo in the medi post medieval sort of period, because now they're thinking from a geocentric point of view. They could then transition to a heliocentric point of view, and like, oh no, with the heliocentric point of view, when we go back to this ancient text, Dude, please bring us. Oh around. no, the, is the sun is the sun point, halting? And you're just rambling. What does this have to do with the Quran? What does this have to do with the Muslim with the... cowboy asked me a question on how I deal with Joshua 10. So I'm giving you a response. Joshua 10 has nothing to do with natural objects halting in the sky. It's to do with polemics, Yahweh versus the other gods. That's all it is. And but scholars no are well evidence. aware of this. Like, where's the evidence for all of this? And I mean, because you, you talk for a while, but... No, oh, no, no, no. There's evidence because we go to those regions and we find the cultic statues and we find evidence of here you go here's Shemesh the sun deity here's the moon deity here's where the battle took place with air and and all those locations it's like this is what th that's what drives our interpretation of the text not that we wonder hang on a second the sun halting in the sky oops that'll cause a gravitational disturbance that'll really eradicate everything that's what I'm saying, because according to science, that wouldn't work. But we're saying that yes, it wouldn't Bible work. And if Christians it, if the sun... don't say that it halted. Oh my goodness! I just explained to you that the text is not talking about the natural objects in the sky. 
if the text but was talking about the natural object how, in the sky, how, I would how, agree with you that it's not scientific, and I would, I would, no on it, right? if and, it's, and, look, if it's talking about the natural object in the sky, I would reject it as outright unscientific. I would agree with you. But the scholarship with no scientific bias, like, ooh, we can't allow a contradiction here, there's none of that. The scholars are just going and doing their engineering work and saying, look, this text is parallel to the Mesotain Omen text. And now we can see why there's an appeal to these deity-like figures with the halting language and all that. That's all it is. It's anachronistic to think that that's what they're thinking. If you think that it's an act, you know, like act, like the sun's actually halting the sky, and then we have to make up theories like maybe maybe there's a refraction of light down the hill, and it just looked like the sun was halted. And so you don't believe that. God, your God, is capable of doing that. No, no, he can't. He can't contradict the laws of nature. Dude, okay. Okay. Hello. So God, well, and I, I have a, I have then, a biblical, then, then I have a biblical, everything that we I have a biblical about mandate for that. In the future, I have a biblical mandate are, for that. All auxiliary Bro. thing, because you actually have to. It's kind of like no offense to you, Rob. It's it would be like me talking to an atheist about why Muhammad's a prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But we haven't addressed first on why there is an existence of God. So with you, Rob, Dude, you you have issues with his capability of the Creator itself. So we would actually have to go back, and it's pointless for me to even talk about. Quran, yeah. Bible, so wait, 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 wait. Let me just get you. Let, hang, on hang, horse, hang, hang on a second. Hang on a second. Let me just get this straight. Let me just get this straight. So you you find it offensive. I'm maybe offensive is too strong a word, but you find That's it not offensive. Weird. I find it ludicrous what you said. Ludicrous is okay. Proper. No, no, no. Let me let me clarify. So. If I deny the like, like if you see it as an actual halting of the sun, yep. you're saying you believe that Allah can do that. Absolutely. Okay. So, you know, I, mean, I have a biblical. I have a biblical. No, 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 everything nature, bro. that comes to when it comes to creation, whether it's the laws of creation, right? All of the laws that have to do with our universe, everything in existence. And the things that are in the creation, the material things that has been subjected to the creator, right, is in subject to the creator and are subject to him changing them, right? And that's our Okay, belief. okay, that's, okay. That's, and that's but I have, it. but it's understand, logical. understand that when I read my Bible, I have a biblical mandate. This is in Jeremiah 31 and 33, for example, and elsewhere. Like the whole notion of the Logos concept fits into this. The biblical mandate that the laws of nature are fixed and God keeps it that way. He himself says, I can't cause the laws of nature to break or contradict. This is in Jeremiah 31. Because if, if the laws were to break, then I break and my covenant with Israel breaks. So just as the laws of nature are consistent and they maintain their integrity and their uniform you know, the uniform nature of the laws of nature, I also don't change. I'm thank immutable. You for, thank you for giving me another reason to say, alhamdulillah, that I'm a Muslim and I don't read a Bible that says, because I can't, I'm bound by my own laws and I can't, I can't But that's it. what I'm making a cup, that's, that's, that's beautiful because God is making no, a covenant not. and making a promise. No, it's not beautiful. So, no, so not. he's not, basically he's saying, not, in, is that he's not intimidated the, the, the by creator, it. The creator, the necessary being, let's take this back, the necessary being, can make himself contingent upon contingent beings. That would therefore he, render him not as the necessary he, being, he, and now he has become a contingent being, needing another necessary being to... No, to be he, no that's not the case. He you just made, said that if he's, the law... In Jeremiah it says, which you, you have to bring the verse, because you bring a lot of stuff without proof, but either way, if this is true, in Jeremiah it it's saying that God can... If his laws break, then he breaks. What kind of God is this? Because he's made a covenant. It's known in the, it's known in the engineering as a Caesarean treaty. In a Caesarean treaty, you have two parties. For example, when, when God walks we through the animal pieces. Covenant. No, wait, wait, wait. I'll God explain to you the logic of this. On, I'll make a covenant with it. I'll make a, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll clarify this. A Caesarean treaty is such that you have two parties making a, a contract. If one party fails, then the whole thing breaks apart. God says, I'm going to make a covenant with you, Abraham, or I'm going to make a covenant with you, Israel. They keep failing, but God still goes along with it because it's all on him. 
Okay. That Last same question. concept is applied to the whole universe, the whole cosmos. And guess what? As a scientist, I can look to a quasar 13 billion light years away and I can say the same laws of physics is applied there as it is over here. The covenant is still in progress and it's still working. I can trust the laws of nature because I can trust in an immutable God who can maintain the integrity of the laws of nature. That's why the scientific method was birthed in Reformation Europe because they're looking at this and going, okay, maybe the weak but nuclear force won't arbitrarily change or the strong nuclear force thing. won't arbitrarily change. Well, it's we'll going to be consistent. We'll see if he does, Morris. One, yeah, one please, because this is I, the I last question. Going that way, Brandon. I this really is the last know. question, uh, Rob. I don't know. I never asked you this before. Okay, so do the laws of science and nature allow for a man to die, be dead, completely dead for three days, and then be resurrected? Thank you. I was going to go with the yeah. birth. I was going to go with the virgin birth, but okay, I like that one better. Yes. What? Yes. So your scientific we have, we that? can, we can conceive of universes. Like, for example, look at uh, Luke Barnes. It would be probably the most prolific author presently living. That and well, has please engaged. stick to the question, dude. Stick to the question. No, I'm giving, I'm giving an example of a physicist who's worked in the fields of fine tuning and the anthropic principle with respect to the multiverse and all the possible universes that are possible with every permutation that you can think of. What is the most sufficiently complex universe to accommodate something like an incarnating principle, a hypostasis of an outside entity and the, and the stardust that you and I are composed of, and to then reverse the thermodynamic death that takes place at death? So in other words, resurrection. How curious, in a transhumanistic you know, in transhumanistic circles, the, which are more so atheistic, sort of like what's called a utopian impulse, they are wanting to do some sort of resurrecting principle. And they're trying to find some sort of hidden secret law of nature that can accommodate that point. Okay. Remember the balloon analogy. Bro, you can't know the center bro, of the balloon. My bro, my bro, he asked so, a very simple question, dude. You're talking about multiverses you're talking about all this. he just asked you a straight yeah okay question. the bullet point okay yeah. bullet point summary it, this universe is sufficient and complex enough with all its parameters to accommodate the reality of an incarnation death and resurrection that's the proposition i'm proposing and i'm in the good company of philosophers so you do and not consider it a miraculous event you consider it a that. scientific event I would consider. Okay, yes, he's talking I about philosophers say, now. He's not talking about scientists. I, would, I know. He's, or, I know. Or people who are physicists. No, I just I said. I just said scientists, philosophers, saying. and theologians. Let me see if I understand you correctly, Rob. You can correct please me if I'm wrong. Please bring the scientists. Well, he's in, uh, here's uh, please bring here's the term. Would... Morris, Morris. Here's the term. Hypernatural, not okay, supernatural. No Thank you for the term. Thank you for the term. Okay, it's so let, not supernatural. Let me make it's sure hypernatural. I'm you correctly, you're saying that the recipe that was created by God Almighty of this universe contains a formula to be decoded to allow for someone to pass away and to resurrect. In with respect to what we understand the laws of nature to be, yes, we've formulated okay. you know ideas to accommodate what happened in the Jesus story according to the New Testament. Okay, so again, so so until that recipe is found, you're going purely based off of faith, right? No, 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 no. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Where, where's this? Where's the scientific? The no, recipe. The recipe, the recipe is the anthropo anthropic principle. No, you you have faith that it's the anthro uh, anthrop. No, principle. no. Unless unless you hold to the multiverse. Oh yeah, then then anything goes. You can have any sort of universe you want. I, uh, but there's no evidence for a multiverse. Bro, you don't believe in God being able to do anything that he wills? You don't believe in God being able to stop and, you know, uh, like, for example, stop the moon in its orbit and the, the world maintaining a, a, a form of order? Same with the sun. You don't believe in all of a sudden that, that there's going to be a um, an utter destruction that's claimed, like in the reckoning? Uh, and, and in the final days and, and the apocalyptic events, you think that all these things are going to be natural orders that are just going to be able to be scientifically figured out 
and all this other stuff. My bro, are you sure you're a Christian? Like so with respect to the say like the fiery ending of the universe, right? So like the Bible speaks about say the curling no, up bro, of the heavens just, and everything are you wraps a Christian? down. Are no, you no, no, no. Wait. Wait. I'm following your thought trajectory here. So for example, in the biblical text, you have this this mention of how the earth and the universe will curl up into this imploding fiery chaos. Yeah, we have a model for that. It's called the ekpyrotic Big Bang model. Yes. If you take the ten dimensions of our universe as a hypothetical flat sheet and you fold it into a lens dimensional plane like a u-shape and then you bring it to a certain distance apart there's a quantum probability that it can fuse into uh, you know the two sheets can fold into itself and then immediately collapse hey, so i can so explain scientifically say what the ending of the universe looks like according to this holy text you know what's more but that doesn't mean me, that that, that doesn't model? mean that doesn't mean I do the same with the halting of the moon arbitrarily you just know because more, you know what's more plausible you, and believable to me when God Almighty says I can do whatever I will that's more believable to me than saying ten dimensional planes and we're gonna fold it on the eleventh plane and it fits in this model bro what the heck are you it's, on just, about? it's just the fact that you said you can conceive of something therefore it's possible earlier you made a very specific claim that the laws of nature are completely fixed. And they do not change. And there is no law of nature that says that something once dead can ever come back alive. That's because of the arrow of time going unidirectionally. If time is one dimension, you have an answer for everything. Unidirectional. Bro. It's incredible, you man. Make, you, 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 you need to write your own book. We got to get Rob's magic. Book. Oh, I've written a 700-page commentary on Mark. You should read it. I, I would definitely not put myself through that mental torture, bro. I've been it's, with you here for an hour, and you got me doing mental gymnastics on the, the weirdest possibilities. You're ever, the one just, you're the one being anti-scientific to me. I don't need to be scientific when it comes to the realm of God. That is what I'm trying to tell you, dude. That's what everyone's right. trying to tell you. You need all to right. get so, out of the realm of science and get into the realm okay, of God. Okay, let's... Let's have a little bit of fun. You mentioned dual canane. Yeah, well, I accept you, uh, Rose with Thorns. I mean, so you you mentioned dual canane and uh, Mary uh, with respect to the Levitical tribe. So, which one do you want to choose first? All right, let's make this fun. We'll make Thank this you for really letting fun. me on. So, there's a couple of notes I'd like to add. One is that um, yes, the Quran does say that there were attempts to crucify Jesus, but he wasn't really crucified. But you know. There was recently the Gospel of Barnaby was found in Turkey, and that gospel said that some, that uh, Judah was crucified and replaced to Jesus, and that's what the Quran says is that someone was crucified and replaced with him. Secondly, is that there are several scientific things such as I have anxiety, so give me a, so give me a second. Sorry, I'll, I'll just there, mute. There Sorry, there's feedback coming to us. Such you. as um, the space thing that's in the sky. And one thing is that, and another thing is that um, Muhammad had lineage to Ishmael. In the Bible, it says that there's a comforter to come. He said, I'm not, he said that I'm not Jesus. Sorry, I have anxiety when I talk in front of people. Dude, dude, don't worry. It's all right. It's chill. It's okay. And another thing is that um, the Bible and Torah have been changed by humans. They, they were prophets and messengers of God, but. The message has been changed by humans. For example, um, in the Gospel of Matthew, it says that um, that the king was 22 when he reigned. In another chapter, it says that he was 44. And there are several age contradictions. So obviously, there's been problems with translations and other things as well. And, and third is that Muhammad had lineage to Ishmael, and he had several knowledge. When he ascended to heaven, he came back with certain knowledge, such as the fact that um, he described how babies were formed in the mother's womb, which no scientist could have known at the time, or doctor. Oh, I would love I to deal with the baby one. Question. Oh, uh, Rob, real quick. Before Embryology in the Quran uh, is Greco-Roman. There's a debate challenge for you, Rob. Uh, I don't know if you want to hear about it, because if you want to accept or not. What's the debate challenge? Uh, it's... What is, I don't know what it's on here. Uh, whoever, brother, because you're listening to this, uh, please text me what the debate challenge is about and how soon you want it. He said probably after Ramadan, um, but there we'll see. I'm waiting on the topic real quick. 
Okay. They just said relay a debate challenge to you. So which which embryologist says that the Quran has a remarkable uh, Oh, scientific... evolutionary biology. No, with respect to embryology, like like which embryologist says that the Quran got it right? No, 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 I'm saying they want to debate on evolutionary biology. Oh. Oh, yeah. Who <laughs> Lucky Who wants you, to debate me on that? He's writing a three-page paper on evolutionary biology. His, his so name is Ilyas Al-Maudi. Sorry? Ilyas Al-Maudi. Okay. What, what's his credentials? From what background and from what area? Like, why, why does he want to debate me on that? I'll, I'll let him answer. Okay. Who's answering? Uh, and brother who's in the chat watching and listening. Okay. Muris, the pharaoh that's mentioned in the Quran, do we know his name? No, it's just his like, pharaoh. Do... Right. Do we know which dynasty of Egypt that Moses was living in? Again, we don't, we don't, we, you, you're looking at it as if it's a book of history, bro. And I've told you, stop doing that. It's a book why of revelation. Can't, why purpose. am I not allowed to do that? If if I was a Muslim, why am I yeah. not allowed to do that? Yeah, it's not that you're not allowed to do it. It's just that it's fruitless to try to connect your own dots when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted something oh, yeah, so, yeah, uh, yeah, we'll a benefit see. to us, he would reveal it directly. So for example, um, if he says something like follow, follow God and follow his prophet, that is a direct, uh, there's no, there, there is nothing ambiguous about that. Right. If it says certain things that are just clear cut and to whatever detail it has, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose that detail for a reason. He didn't choose it so that Rob could sit here and try to okay. decipher what's in okay. God's head for lack of a better okay. word. Okay. So when the Quran says that Pharaoh drowned, now it's making a historical claim that that or or like the historicity of some unknown pharaoh and we because we don't know which din, di, di, dynastic period okay. we're talking right yes obviously egyptologists would say based on the exodus uh details that it's no, uh, ramses the great anything no 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 wait according to egyptologists the high probability is that ramses the great is the pharaoh of the exodus but putting that aside they themselves will say that the exodus account and Egypt itself, like Egypt scholarship itself, will say no pharaoh drowned. But the Quran is making a claim that the pharaoh drowned. Now what? Okay. As okay, a, if I was what? a Muslim, if I gave my shahada, okay. and They're I'm looking saying... at this with already the mindset of a scientist, I'm th I want verification that the pharaoh drowned. What are you going to do with that now? Okay. So again, you're looking for every specific detail to be answered to you. And that's not what the Quran is about. The, the Quran is not about answering every detail so Rob can take his shahada. That's not what the Quran is about, bro. So why should I be a so why should I be a Muslim then? Okay, I'm gonna tell just, you why. just to follow this like it's a guide, no. like Surah One says, show us no. a straight way. That's all this it is. This is the thing. Here's why you should be a Muslim, bro, because it'll not only give you the best possible worldly lifestyle in this life, but it will also give you the best reward in the afterlife. That's what reward why. is that? What do you mean what reward is that? Pleasure with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be in the pleasure of be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to get Jannah and to, get, to be in paradise. What do you mean? What, what does that look like? Why do I need to know what it looks like, bro? It looks pleasant. <laughs> what? What? How so do you know it's you pleasant do? if you don't know what's gonna happen? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that it is oh, a place oh, oh, it's a promise. Okay, so what's wrong in with something you don't ju what's wrong with just as you don't okay, okay, look at this, look at this. This is this is why it's so humorous. Just as you don't know what the what the historical details are, so you don't know what even the future details are. We do just know what the future details accept are. it for now. We do know no. what the future details are. We can we look not, proving the Quran has nothing to do with historical details. You you're can trying to prove future details by ignoring historical details? No. But I thought historical details would verify that details. this is a whole How text? often has history not been reliable? Many, many instances. Many times. Like so many times. The, I think it's it's I think you have a a, a misunderstanding of like what 
our relationship with our creator should be based on it should exactly, it doesn't bro. need to be based on the things that you are wanting it to be based then on then why the then why the make the claim that the pharaoh drowned no why hold make on it? brandon don't let him get away with, don't let him get away from this what his issue is and i'm going to tell you again rob is a lost panel down that tells you enough detail enough detail he does not give you overwhelming amounts of detail. If we don't right. know like if the pharaoh drowned or not, Musa why mention it? Beard? Like how many hairs did he have? Like, okay, the, the, the Bible doesn't say that. The Quran doesn't say it. So therefore it's not from God. Like how, you, you're you wanting more stuff. There's a difference between stuff. asking how many strands of hair there is in his beard versus a specific claim that the pharaoh drowned. Okay, so it says that pharaoh drowned. That's it doesn't right. as a sign. As drowned. a sign. For people to time. come in the future. Right, correct. Right? So he gives you the reason why he says the Pharaoh drowned. Everything that is mentioned has a reason for it. So, so which why Pharaoh drowned? Which Pharaoh drowned? Why do you care which Pharaoh drowned? Why do you care? If, because if we then, were... okay, wait, 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 wait. Imagine right now. Yeah, imagine tomorrow. Okay, wait, wait. Hey, Just... Tortoise, it was good having you, man. Allah bless you, man. It's good to see you as well, Tortoise. We'll be in contact. I'll, I'll send you an email. We'll, we'll hit, hit you up and we'll do some good stuff, bro. Imagine tomorrow. Like it would, it would, it would be fantastic for you guys. Imagine if tomorrow, after this discussion, suddenly, big Nobel Prize winning news: we found the pharaoh that actually drowned. You guys would be like praising from the rooftops. I'll, you know, all yeah, praise be to Allah. His name care. is Maurice Bukayel, and he was a non-Muslim atheist uh, researcher, and he became a Muslim because of the finding of the body of Pharaoh. Yeah, that's that's a whole myth. I've looked into his claims. He's some French doctor that made this claim. He's been debunked. It's pseudoscientific. He's not an Egyptologist. Again, says why, so so says who? Who because it? he because he said he said Ramses the Great drowned. Ramses lived to a very old age, and that was actually in in Egypt superstition. Uh, if you live to an old age, if you're a pharaoh and you live to an old age, you're cursed with long life. It's a curse. That's why Egyptologists wonder if Ramses the Great is the Pharaoh of the Exodus because he's been cursed. That's one of the that's one of the circumstantial evidences. That I don't he could care be about superstitions. I want to go back to what you said in regards to why we. And why also, you'll have to bring it? up proof that it was debunked and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Why would we um, be nonetheless? Oh, by the way, uh, just to let you know. Then don't just yeah. bring up his name because I've I've already read his, you know, his argument, and Egypt scholars have read his argument, and it's it's like the Ron Wyatt's of Christianity. It's it's just as Ron Wyatt and Christianity claimed that he found, you know, uh, the blood of Jesus on the Ark of the Covenant, and he found, like, the bones of Adam, and, like, all these crazy Indiana Jones sort of stories, Maurice was exactly the same way with Egyptology. It's... All right, so just to let so, you know, uh, Ilyas al-Ma'udi, that's uh, we Sam al-Mahdi. Do you still want to debate? Wait, so, sorry, say that again? The brother who wanted to debate you, what? Ilyas al-Ma'udi, his name on yeah. the, the chat, that's his, his, he is, he's we Sam al-Mahdi. Wizam and Mahdi. So they there want they want to debate me on evolutionary biology. Yes. You know Wizam. You, you know him. Very yeah, yeah, very yeah, well. yeah. So, okay, but what... Okay, give me like... Because now that's a pretty broad topic. Are we talking about human evolution? Are we talking about evolution in general? All, Are we talking about general Adam was the first man? Biology. All right. Go for it. Okay. If you want to do it on this channel, let's debate it. Okay, that'll, that'll be fine. It'll have to be after Ramadan because he doesn't want to argue when he's fasting. So it'll be. So if you um, if you want to do like a broad brush like overview, I can give you my model. How basically I feel. the theory, yeah, the theory yeah. of the theory of it all. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in regards to what you said, would Muslims be over you know overjoyed? No, because we don't need for something to happen to believe what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, bro. We don't need something then why, to happen. Why bring up Maurice then just a moment ago? I, I don't care about Maurice. I, that, Brandon just said that as a courtesy to you. That's, I, I don't No no no, no I'm not I mean, I'm not accusing you or Brandon. I'm saying those people suddenly would are jumping to we need to show a piece of evidence. Because they're trying to satisfy your craving, bro. That's on the, you're you're you're. They're trying to work within your framework of what you would. Am find I the only one craving this? He's gonna message you on Twitter. Uh, I think you're the only one that I'm talking to right now. So I, 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 what do I know? What do I care about anybody else outside of this conversation, bro? There's like, thousands of people that crave. Yeah, I don't care. I'm talking to you right now, bro. I'm talking to you. But right I'm now. I'm. I, 
I'm speaking on behalf of all those viewers that will be watching really this discussion shouldn't. as well. You should just be speaking on behalf of yourself. I'm also speaking on behalf of myself. Just stick to speaking that's on the, behalf that's, of yourself. That's why, I, that's why I require validation if the Pharaoh okay. drowned, tick to the Quran. The Quran got it right. right. How many how many ticks would you need to accept the Quran? 100%. 100%. All the way through. Okay. Yeah. So is there any way that we can take an accelerated route to get those ticks for you? Uh, I, I don't care about... It doesn't need to be sped up. It doesn't need to be... No, I'm saying, is there anything can that we can do to categorically prove the ticks to you? Uh, you mean... It, so what? Like, choose what's the, the least... Hardest no, 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 no. required see, to thing, the man. hardest. You love working in the micro, but you don't know how to apply macro, bro. This is and this is the this is when you're looking for too many details, dude. It's like you're sitting there trying to pluck stuff with tweezers, you know, constantly. No, no, just to claim, just okay, to claim that the Pharaoh drown is in itself a macro Listen, detail. Here's the because claim. in any in any case, you're talking about here's a macro the detail, a Pharaoh here's drown. The claim. Here's the, the finer claim. detail is specifically the name, the date, the right. dynasty. Right. Here is the claim. The claim is that there was a man in Arabia who claimed that he was receiving revelation from God. He was either lying, telling the truth, deceived, or talking to the devil. Which one is it? Since I do hold to a supernatural worldview, I am of the opinion that it's a combination of lying deceit and talking to a jinn okay great so now could be all some could be through all three simultaneously was he known as a liar that's that's a historical detail i'm not aware of like i as far as uh his the biography of muhammad that's not uh something i've looked into okay so let me get this straight and i appreciate your honesty man I'm, here's a biography. by the way my here's, criticism here's is the Quran. Here's another that's, volume. that's been my that's been my focus okay. of my research. No problem. But you but here's the thing, my 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 bro. You cannot test supernatural claims with non-supernatural uh, links or materials. We don't have access to the materials apart from the Quran, and the only link that we have is the Prophet, peace be upon him. So, right. But just okay. to clarify, just to clarify, notice and and Neither of you, and especially those people there claiming that I have a uh, like an Islamophobic decorum or something, not once have I ever, especially in my discussion with Taurus King, not once did I ever go down the route of um, looking at the life of Muhammad and whatever he did. And you know, oh, his brother, how could you? You haven't read I, about I, it. I, but that's my point. So can I'm I, focusing. Can I'm focusing with what can I, I know in regards to my criticisms of it. No problem. You need right. to start with the fundamentals. You need to know who the prophet of Islam is. You don't. You you can't. Okay. You can't immediately go smacking. Uh, you know the message when you don't even know who the messenger is. This is a this is a I, false and insincere I know, approach. Well, I know enough through the Quran. No. But if you the want Quran me to wait, wait, wait. If you want me to, if you want me to. You know, I'm a, my attention to detail is such that I'll go through the fine of you know, uh, fine tooth comb sort of method. Yep. If you want me to look at his specific biography, if you can recommend me a book for yes. me to read. Yes. Here, this one. Uh, what's What's the name of the book? By Mahdi Rizqullah, the Pro the Prophet of Islam. Can you type it in the private chat? Yeah, it's in two name? volumes. And I will oh, give this a read. All right. Yeah. I've got the oldest name. Mahdi, Mahdi Riskula. All right. Uh, we're going to close right. this up soon. Um, last last uh, statements. Rob. Uh, we're going okay. to bring one, two, three on to say a few things too. Um, no problem. So, thank you. Have... Let me just tell him one, one thing. I appreciate you taking the time to read the biography of the prophet. I think that it's a very genuine and sincere thing of you to do. I also find it and with all due respect, bro, shocking that you made it this far to talk about Islam in the in the mannerisms that you did without actually knowing even the fundamentals of the creed or the the who the messenger was. Shocking, like for real. I anyway, with all due respect, I'm with glad to with hear a lot. Just to just to clarify, with a lot that I, going that's going on in my life, 
uh, there's a lot. I got you. There's man. a lot that I do in my life. I got you, bro. But you're this still is, this is this time. is your life that no, you're no, dedic no. you've dedicated most of your no, time with. Bro. I have I have a lot going on in my life too. You're not alone. Yeah, bro. and and so that's why I'm coming back at you and saying I'll give this a read. Thank you. And how when when do you want me to to like what's like. Take like a month from now. This isn't a homework assignment. This is for your own personal. Of course, it's a homework assignment. Life. No, it's not. I want to treat it like a homework assignment. No, bro. I'm not. You want I'm me to come back in a month? No, bro. Just you can you can read a page and be like, hey, Morris, I got this. You know, this was cool. Whatever, dude. We're not here to pillory you, bro. Okay. We're okay. Not here to, Within. Do you want me to? Do you want me to give my review in a month? <laughs> like, what's the time frame you want me to come back with you on this? Like, average. Like average, how long do you think I it'll take me to read through this book? Again, bro. Again, it's you, I'm not I'm not gonna do that to you. It's out of the pure desire to want to learn about the messenger. It's not about to try to negate something that happened to him, bro. It's out of see. This is it, what I'm saying. I'm not, this is where a lot of people talks about sincerity. It's exactly this is the point why your heart is sealed, bro. You're sitting over here. Give me an average this so I can give you a review of that. Dude, this is for you. This isn't for me. I've got closure, baby. I'm good. Alhamdulillah, I'm good. I don't. All right, all right, you. all right. So here's so your okay. Here's your um, challenge or your assertion. I will have a complete change, or close to complete change. I'm still being honest there, right? Of my perception of Muhammad, if I give this book a read. No. My my advice to you, or what I'm asking of you, not even advice, what I'm asking of you is to sincerely get to know the messenger of Islam. Get to know what his character was like. Get to Even know if I disagree with him? Of We're not asking you to agree or disagree. We're not Just asking you to, to agree learn it. Disagree. Okay, okay. Get to know the okay. guy. How can you disagree right. without knowing the guy? That's okay. like saying I hate okay. pizza. I never had pizza. Okay, all right. So right. what wow. what you just okay in conclusion what you want me to get out of the book I learn about the man to recognize bridge this to bridge recognize this now to the Quran there's these op, op, there are these options of who he was he was either truthful because mm -hmm. he made a claim right what is the yep. claim that he is a prophet right so either he is the most truthful person because if someone's a prophet they're telling the truth about what they're doing yep. so he's either the most truthful or mm -hmm. he is a liar or okay. he was possessed right or he was mm -hmm. insane right he had some mm -hmm. mental issues so when you learn about the history of the statements of thousands of people or tens of thousands of people who were around him met him right and what they said and what people who were enemies of his said that were related and marked down were were there he's saying will you ever in any of that reading ever find anything that exists that anyone ever claimed that he was a, a liar right and that's the point. Right. And so if it's not that, then let's see. Was he someone who was insane? Did he have any of the marks of insanity? Because people on the outside say, yeah, he was insane. They never read anything about his life, right? Or they say he was possessed by a jinn. What does jinn possession look like? What are the effects of sure. it? How do people Those are all valid questions. questions. I like I like where that's going. Excellent. So last, Those are good uh, scientific I wanna, I wanna, questions. I got to bring these guests up. I have to go. Kids are waiting on me to go to the park before it's 2.29 So this is my final, my final 10 second comment. If he's an absolutely fantastic dude, like if that's what is then laid out, like if in that particular book, in those two volumes, if I if I if it turns out he's not a liar, he's genuine. In fact, he was indeed getting revelation from Allah. Uh oh, roadblock. Now, when I look to the Quran, there's all these hurdles I've just laid out that I already know that I need validation of, but there's no validation. The validation is that God can't tell lies, man. That's the exactly so exactly. Goes, goes so I've hit a massive roadblock. No, you you haven't. From the Quran. Just read the book first. Read it. All right, I'll read the book first. Hey, come on, man. You got to give me something to work with, dude. You know, oh, man. If we, yo, bro, if we ever need someone to reach Mars, dude, without error, I'm going to you, dude. But if you need oh, someone to reach God, you, without you and I would have you fun. I'll it. show you all the permutations of the argon gas and the Martian, you know, atmosphere yeah. and all. And that I love stuff. you for it, dude. You're a scientist in every regard. I, that's mashallah. All right, so I want to end with Rob. Oh, before we bring up the next two guests, the last statement to Rob. 
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله لا يستحيي أن يضرب مثلا ما بعوضة فما فوقها فأما الذين آمنوا فيعلمون أنه الحق من ربهم وأما الذين كفروا فيقولون ماذا أراد الله بهذا مثلا يضل به كثيرا ويهدي به كثيرا وما يضل به إلا الفاسقين And this is, goes back to like the, the epistemology of the entire discussion that we've had. Allah, indeed Allah is not timid to present an example, that of a mosquito or that which is smaller than it, right? And those who have believed know that is the truth from their Lord. But as those who disbelieve, and it's talking about an ayah, like a sign, a verse in the Quran, any of these things that God is presenting, right? That people will say, why? Why is this being brought up, the body of Pharaoh or this? Or the size of something that's so small of a mosquito or even smaller than it. They ask the, those who disbelieve, they say, what did Allah intend by this as an example? Why is this here? Does, why should this be said? He misleads many thereby and guides many thereby. And he misleads not except the defiantly disobedient. So I would say maybe, you know, change your epistemology. And I think that will help you understand things. And that's just my opinion, Rob. I wish you guidance. I wish you the best. This is Ramadan. I ask Allah to, you, you know, uh, to give us all more mercy with people all around us, including those who don't agree with us, um, and to make us those who are upon the truth. Because as a truth seeker, I wish for other people to also be upon the truth. And I ask Allah, the Creator, Al Quddus, Al Salam, Al Mutakabbir, Al Muhaymin, Al Khaliq, Al Aziz, Al Jabbar, to accept all from all of this if this is the Layla to Qadr. Uh, then I ask Allah to allow us to get the most rewards for all of the good deeds that we're doing in this and to elevate it and to keep increasing us in goodness. Uh, so thank you, Rob, for coming on, and we'll talk to you later. The one the one ayah I take away, that I genuinely take away, by the way, I'm not mocking when I say this, mm -hmm. is in Surah 1, show us a straight way. That I completely agree with. Alhamdulillah, bro. Alhamdulillah. All right, alhamdulillah. All right, peace.